Lenten Lunchtime Lesson with Father Andrew of the Society of the Divine Compassion. Friday, after the second Sunday of Lent, Faith and Prayer. The way in which a man prays when he prays really and simply, not saying prayers composed by others unless they are truly the expression of his own faith, but with simplicity, talking to God in absolute confidence and sincerity, tells what a man's faith is. But St. Paul's faith was a radiantly happy faith. After his conversion, all his life was a song of gratitude. He is writing now in prison in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23, and to very faulty people. He has to tell them that they must put away falsehood and speak truth, that they must give up thieving and folk talk and covetousness and gross sensual sins. But he cries, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. St. Paul's joy was based on three great faiths. He believed utterly in the eternal purpose of God. His joy was not dependent upon the present conditions of his life or his own feelings or anything in himself, but completely and entirely in the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, as he says, hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. He believed in regeneration, or as he puts it, adoption in Christ. His first activity on arriving in Ephesus was to see that certain people who were defectively baptized according to John's baptism and had not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost were given true Christian baptism and confirmation. He calls Ephesians saints, consecrated people. They are children of God now. They have not to become something that they are not, but to be true to the new life which is really theirs already. The simplest and most obvious account of regeneration is the truest. When a man is regenerated, he receives a new life and receives it from God. In itself, regeneration is not a change in his old life, but the beginning of a new life which is conferred by the immediate and supernatural act of the Holy Spirit. The man is really born again. A higher nature comes to him than that which he inherited from his human parents. He is begotten of God, born of the Spirit. St. Paul's mind was full of the praise and glory of the grace of God. He believed in man's power to correspond with and react to the grace of God. He believed that these faulty Ephesians could become saints and know the exceeding greatness of Christ's power in them through their fellowship in the church, which is his body. It is a thrilling thing to believe in a divine eternal purpose, a holy, all-powerful will holding on its course through all the ages to bring into being a perfect humanity. That St. Paul believed with ever-deepening conviction and so increasing joy. The incarnation of Christ was God's great instrument. The church is Christ's instrument. The individual Christian is the church's instrument to fashion the manhood that would give to God the glory and joy for which he was ready to accept a cross, fashioned by these very creatures of whom of he had such hopes, for whom he had such love. Whenever St. Paul sees the hand of God in present experience, at once his mind works back to an eternal will, and therefore also forward to an eternal and adequate result. It is only in the church that there is set before us an ideal which, may hope to, which we may hope to reach, though it is altogether beyond any natural capacity we have. The ideal is a perfect human nature lifted up to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This fullness is in God himself. It has been revealed in Christ and is being brought into manifestation in his church as the church is purified and sanctified. And because the church is made up of individuals, in every separate disciple, and through the church in some mysterious way throughout the whole universe, so that the whole creation may be filled with the fullness of him that filleth all in all. It is not strange that, even though he was in prison and chained to the soldier who kept him, when his mind held such thoughts, Paul was able to write a letter to faulty people with thrills and thankfulness.